All right, welcome to the studio, guys. We, this is uh, Talk with Mike and Tom, and uh, we have a special guest with us here, Tom. So how are you doing today? First of all, are you ready for this? Well, we're bringing in my brother, Mark Hackett, software engineer, extraordinary uh, community activist. He might talk about some of that here at 1214 First Avenue. We're high above First Avenue in the CMG studios. So go. welcome, Mark Hackett. Why, well, thank you. So how are you doing today? It's a blast to be here. All right, it's great. <laughs> I it's had a great time getting down here, that's for sure. Well, we're gonna <laughs> we're definitely gonna talk about that because you are a Tesla owner. I'm a new Tesla owner. A new, new a Tesla. newbie Tesla owner. Well, uh, any way you can get it. You new or old right. from my point of view. I just uh, I'm amazed by that technology. I'm amazed by how fast this has hit the market and it's out there and it's available. Because I think some years back I kept thinking, okay, we're going to get to the electric car. But then Tom and I have had these conversations about um, – Where's my flying car? Right. Uh, yeah, technology sure. has promised us all of this, and we haven't gotten it yet. But hey, look, we're we're here with an electric car, and I want to hear about. Well, this. the first really question do. is, do you know Elon Musk? See, that's a, that would be of high interest to Mike, who I, I really wish, thinks wish, he's the stuff. Now. I wish I did. <laughs> I know of him. That's right. That's right. We we see him on uh, on TV on the on the web and just about everywhere. Where he whether he's boring um a tunnel under las vegas uh i don't know the boring company or where he's planning to send us to mars uh tom you have any idea about going to mars and it is something like that you ready well elon ready musk go? did he and joe rogan were trying to get to mars but the way they were doing it really oh. d- didn't have anything to do with a rocket I that's think. right uh, you know they were that's they were right. doing something else but i think they got there anyway yeah they so. went they went look groovy man so they went, anyway. they went somewhere fast that's yeah, for sure right. on that mm-hmm. Well, the guy is is really amazing from my point of view. Uh, true genius in a, in a, in a, in the sense of the word, and um, has used the money that he made early on, the PayPal right, and all right. of the other stuff that. I mean, happened. he's a visionary, really. He, he really is, and and in some ways, I think he's kind of inspiring. But he he's also diverse in his interests. So um, so let's let's talk about this uh, this Tesla just for a minute. How did you come to this decision on um, buying a Tesla? What was what was your thinking about with this? Well, um, Renee was getting tired of her BMW. She'd had it for ten years. Nice little right. car. It's a little jet car, a Z4. Mm-hmm. And uh, we wanted to get off fossil fuel, basically. Yes. And so we're talking about oh well, what's out there? There's a Leaf. There's right, right, a right. Hybrid. And my youngest son is totally into spacex all things elon yes. musk as well yes. so yes. he's a space I'm nerd he went down to cape canaveral to watch a launch and all that stuff so did he oh yeah yeah okay and uh he says dad don't get a leaf don't get a leaf they their batteries wear out really fast right because okay. the the tesla has water cooled batteries so they regulate the temperature on those lithium ion <laughs> batteries and leaf doesn't do that no other car no other electric car does that, only the Tesla. That's the kind of thing that, that we think of when I think of Elon Musk, because it's not just, okay, we've got this, but everything behind it to make it work right uh, and have this longevity of things and have it be something that's going to be here for a while. It's going to be available, and it's going to get better as things go. Oh, yeah. I mean, and uh, I was talking to my wife as I was – letting the car drive itself down here from atlanta which was <laughs> okay an absolute hoot you know but, tom's about to faint over there when that car starts <laughs> driving by itself you know he's he's talked about it you yeah, know I was, said, ne- I was a never tesla guy and last night i was riding around in the thing incidentally yes what's going to shock you yes is when he steps on the it's not gas but steps on the juice <laughs> yeah it goes to 60 in about four seconds oh it's un it's faster than the beamer which Pins was a sports you back car to the seat it and really just does. goes it's it's the fastest car on the street see there, there astonishing it is. there yeah. it is uh that is yeah. um I, I just can't i can't quite get ready for that in some ways uh you know the the idea that it's quiet 
You just wait. You don't hear this rumbling sound you, you, of a motor. You, you just wait. We'll get you in that. Thing <laughs> okay. And you're gonna love it. That's, well, I tell you uh, what. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the camera, one of our small cameras, with us, and we'll oh, go for a to. ride, and yeah. we'll get we'll get some video and put in this uh, this episode as we're talking about. That's it. great. People need to see this stuff. I think yeah. it's pretty uh, pretty exciting. I'm so, I'm so glad, Mark, that you're here. Well, well. So you and your wife decided, hey, after doing some research, and you. Young son said, "Hey, us out. Yep. Keep, keep keep up the speed. That that helps for a lot of us, I think. That uh, you were going to go there. So, wh- what kind of experience was it like buying the Tesla? Okay, there's a there's a Tesla dealership off Old Milton Parkway in Atlanta, 400. Okay, that's right. We didn't mention before, but Mark's from Atlanta. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. And so, uh, Renee knows me. She she knows if I'm going car shopping." There's not going to be a whole lot of shopping going on before a car is bought. I mean, right? It's I'm not a big He's, look around all. Go out cars. that afternoon. Car comes back later. Right. <laughs> right. I got it. So we went out there, and uh, you can't even test drive one the day you go out there because you got to schedule a test drive. So we got to oh. sit in one. And okay. Okay. We go out there. We sit in one, and there's nothing on the dashboard. There's just this screen right there. There's no speedometer. There's no tack. There's no nothing. It's a dashboard. And, and importantly, uh, no gas gauge. I guess that would be the other well, thing. Well, it's have to all think on about. that screen in the middle. So everything's it's all on. on. It's it's like your tablet there. Yeah. It's just sitting oh, absolutely. there. Absolutely. Here we go with the. Uh, but it's bigger than with that. The, with the tablet and uh, people can see on the screen there. But yeah, it is bigger. Uh, uh, that's interesting. I want to come back to that. So you you. Um, you were able to sit in it, but you had to schedule. A- so we went out there three days later and drove one. Okay. And that's a bit of an experience because they immediately – it's right by Highway 400. Okay. They immediately put you in the car. They give you a quick tutorial. They dump you out on Highway 400 with the Tesla guy sitting beside you. I was wondering if they got a Tesla guy in there that and just they, helps uh, out. But, and they know. say, okay, click down twice on the stock, and you're on autopilot. And – that car is going around a curve, and the little steering wheel icon is turning up there. Okay, okay. All <laughs> and right. you got your hands on the wheel, and it and it says you have to keep your hands on the wheel. Yes. Well, that's pretty. Uh, even with the self driving, all of that stuff. Yes. Look, you can't take a nap while these things are right. running. Right. It Come is on. not an autonomous vehicle, and I have. We're not there yet. We're not quite there yet. I've but it. can you? take your hands off the wheel you can i mean you can it is disorienting for a new passenger you, to see that you, by the if way you're, <laughs> it Tom, is disorienting your experience as yes. a passenger yeah i was so, never so he takes to, his hands yes. off and you and the car, like, and, and, you start to grab the the wheel probably that's well, your I, instinct i, right? I found that i found my roman catholic training kicking in <laughs> and i began to pray you know and I, <laughs> then i felt okay with whatever happened <laughs> Well, there, there's an interesting thing about this car. Um, I learned something about my own driving technique as oh, soon yeah. as I started to use the autopilot. Right. Uh, is that I tend to drive right up against the driver's side lane line. Okay. And I think that's just instinctive for us yes. because you can't really see how much space you have on the passenger mm-hmm. side, so you tend to creep toward – the driver's that's side. That's right. I think that's common, really. Yeah. Okay. The Tesla drives right down the middle of the lane. And as soon as you put it on autopilot, you're thinking it's it's – it's not doing it right. Right, <laughs> it's right. too far over that way. So that's an interesting thought. <laughs> so so you it wanna, really you wanna, centers. You want to take it first Let's time get you it, do it, get you it do back that, up. and it kicks it out of autopilot because you jerk the wheel. Right. You grab it and took over its instant. Okay. Uh, and so you got to just – you really got to – the first time you do it, you just uh, – uh, okay, it's doing it okay. <laughs> I got to let it, let it go. That's a big adjustment right there. I, I can but you imagine. Get, it's amazing how fast you get used to it. Now, it, when you say, you say it's in the center then, uh, it seems to me like it's using those those markers on the road. Yes. It's got so the camera. It, it reads the markers on the road. Okay, so – It's a right, visual if, camera. If that's something, let's go down that country lane at some point with no markers. I'm not sure it, that's going to work. Right? Okay, it's got a little gray steering wheel on okay. the uh, on the screen right. that comes on if autopilot can be engaged, and the gray okay. the gray steering wheel only appears if it can detect enough lane markers to stay in the lane. Okay, 
Okay. Answers and that question. And All as right. soon yeah, as you see, see that gray steering wheel, you can go dink, dink down on the stock, and it turns blue, and it's driving. Now, you said stock two times now. i got to ask you, what is that? Okay, you know, like you have – your turn signal stock, right. and you got maybe a windshield okay. wiper stock. Okay. Well, All right. the just Tesla make just sure. has two stocks. The one on the right is how you put it in park, drive, or reverse, and that's also how you engage the autopilot. So okay. it's down to go into drive, it's up to go in reverse, push the end to go into park, and if you're driving and you want to go into autopilot, well, one down time to go into cruise control, two down to go into autopilot. Wow. So the, one wow. of the wow. one of the most fascinating things, and I wish you'd talk a little bit about this. So we walked out of the Outback Steakhouse mm-hmm. and walked up to the car. Talk us through what you did from that, because I'm still not sure how we got to being, in my driving. mind, cranked up and driving. Okay. The- so it's not really the same thing as a car in any way. It's no. not even the same thing as a golf cart. It is a different process, right? You don't turn the car on. So talk to, explain to me how that happened. Well, when you first get the car, you've got a credit card. I've got, I've got it with me here. I uh, should okay. pull this out. You got, your key is a credit card looking thing. Um, I should have had this ready. Mark carries everything in a, in a air, air mail envelope. He, you know, he's uh, <laughs> okay, that's he's, strange, that's, 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 he's that, very eccentric. That, that, that's even stranger than the yeah, uh, yeah the he Tesla is. He's for some reason, but there's there's your Tesla key. Tom, show, okay. that, show that around. All right, here. Show that okay. around. Why don't you get that on the camera? All right, I'll, I'll get it on my on my camera here. Yeah. Um, All right. So this looks like the card. There we go. Let's yeah. go back uh, here. I don't know if you can see it. All right. Little, little lang. All right, there we go. Just a credit card size That's your key. key. That's, That's your key. key. And you walk up to the okay. car, and there's a camera right between the driver's side window and the back seat window okay it's right on the on the piece between there and you okay. stick this under the camera and it opens the car okay but once okay. you own the car you're done with this you set it up to your iphone okay now we're getting somewhere tom because uh I think that center screen reminds me of the iPad, and I'm just wondering when did I Apple get involved in this? Or, or oh, they? it's not just your iPhone; it could be okay. your Android. Okay, or whatever. you could use your any, Android. Any okay, smartphone will do. It, it, right. It's a different interface from either the Droid or the iPhone to me, or okay. the iPad. Yeah, it looks not, different. It is, a, right. and yeah, these are separate yeah. companies. So I was stretching it a bit just to see if. Yeah, uh, I don't. I no, I, I didn't see an unholy alliance. What I saw was a. a with every, as with everything with Elon, right. it's a he's got his own deal going. You know, that's what that it was. A, when I slow it down just a little bit and start thinking about building a car from scratch, really, yeah, um, and doing it by yourself, and every little nuance and everything that goes into a car, in this case, without a gas engine and so forth. All the little thing it, it must take forever to think for someone to think of that going all the way to the finished product. That blows me away in lots of ways. Well, and to I, me, I using the car it. brings that out even more because mm-hmm. as you use the car, you're going, "Wow, they put so they thought much through thought into this." Yeah. So yeah, you walk up to the car, you don't, you don't um, use a key. You just have your phone in your pocket with the Tesla app on. Right. And you hit the door, and it opens. A locked you, door opens. There we go. Don't and, have to do anything. And you hop in the car, put on your seat belt, go down once on the stock, and drive. Jeez. And that's it. All right. And, and there's and, and, no and, sound. And then when you – Well, that's the road th- sound. That, yeah. That's the thing. It, it, um, you, your tires will make sound on the pavement. That's what you hear. And that's that's all about you, all you hear. That's all you hear. Right? And, then, right. and then when you get out, you park the car, you pull over. You hit the end of the button to hit it and park, and mm-hmm. you get out, and you walk away. If if Mark's driving, you hear one more thing. You hear the tires at first, and then you 
hear the whoosh of the wind as he accelerates to whatever <laughs> exorbitant <laughs> speed he desires. And uh, I hope no uh, law enforcement is listening and Listen, targeting that. Law enforcement that, should know. just give him a pass until, Man, until we I get I tell you, it's an these, amazing uh, piece of machinery. Well, it well, is. And, and you have a power curve on – I don't know how many of our people know what a power curve is, but, you know, on a regular gasoline car, you got a little bit of horsepower down here and a lot of horsepower when the engine's up at four or 5,000 RPM. Right. Right, right. And you got a lot of torque down here, but your torque goes down as you go up. Tesla's power curve is flat. Flat right. power curve. It doesn't matter when you hit the gas, then it's not gas. Yeah, I think. But, right, right. Yeah, it, no, this is another thought right there. Yeah, a lot of folks that's like. That's a skewomorph. Hitting the gas is going to become a skewomorph. Yeah, Nissans have tried to approximate that kind of thing earlier by having that smooth variable transmission right, that right. shifts through like a zillion gears so that you're but always in the optimal speed range of the motor there's right? no comparison right. between the two technologies this is uh it's like being on a rocket i mean i can't think it the only other thing i can think of is and i've never experienced it but if you're in a fuel dragster or something where you just spin the right. tires until they grab and go it's that fast acceleration and then there's a sport model right right that's this is faster. not the fastest one this oh, is yeah, the slow right, one so, right. so, so my wife's z4 was Zero to sixty in about four point five seconds. Okay. This car is zero to sixty in four point three, so it's faster than that Nissan. I mean that uh, BMW Z4. The the performance model of the Model Three is zero to sixty in three point two seconds. There is no other car on the road. It that takes does on that. the Porsche. It takes on everything. Well, mine will take on a Porsche. <laughs> mine accelerates faster than my buddy's Porsche. <laughs> And the performance one blows that away. It's See, I'd need, a, like yeah. NASCAR drivers, a whole Han harness if I was going to drive that. It's just the, the, the acceleration, you actually feel the Gs. Well, now, I mean, does that know. have two motors? Mine There's has one that two has motors. two motors. Mine has right? two motors, and that's how you okay. get the long-range version. Okay, so that that is the way that that uh, you get the. What is the mileage now? How far can the you long go range, on the charge? The right. long range version is uh, they claim three hundred fifteen miles. Uh, there, like anything, there's a lot of variables that go into that. Sure. If you drive sure. fast, I'm not saying I drive eighty. No. But if you drive eighty, right? Um, you know, guy you get, that knows you, a guy. I know a guy that knows a guy. Right? You get about two hundred fifty miles out of the range. Okay. But yeah. See, that's the thing. I wouldn't want to be the. I wouldn't want to have to test it. Okay. I'm going. Okay. Now I'm out of power. I'm oh, sure you got oh, all kind of indicators got, for that kind it's of thing got, too. Right. You just hit a button on the screen and you got your energy graph. It tells you how many miles you have left. You can say how many miles do I have left based on how I've been driving the last thirty miles, the last fifty. 15 miles the last five miles and it shows you the graph of how much you're using how yeah many, that's interesting what, thing. Hour, what hours you're using per mile as you go when so you really that's gas, a long way can, though <laughs> because it's here to savannah easily yes. you could easily make savannah oh, yeah, on right. one charge yeah and yeah, then well, you for, could find a charging station in the city like savannah right if you are going on a trip you tell tesla you tell your screen where mm-hmm. you're going Mm-hmm. And it routes your trip yes. to now, the charging stations so you never run out of gas. You know where the charging stations are. Uh, yeah, I, s- I actually saw that. And that was one of my questions when I, I, I was sort of at the mall talking to the Tesla dealer mm-hmm. and sitting in one and kind of uh, asking these questions. I said, I want to go on a uh, – I want to go to California from Georgia, a nationwide and it trip. And it, yeah, he popped it in, and it had all of the stations there that you would stop and get charged on. That was pretty amazing. And the supercharged idea. stations will put 150 miles on the car in 15 minutes. Okay. So it's so it's it's getting akin to going to a gas station. So the way you you charge it now is at home for the most part, right? So you, you wake up every morning with a full tank of gas, mm-hmm. another skewing more. Okay, yeah, there we go. We got to change our vocabulary and uh, the way we our phrases on some of this stuff. So. Oh, and the beautiful thing. Now, my electric supplier is Cobb EMC, and mm-hmm. I'm on a rate. They have a nighttime rate where you get some free, some free charging. Okay, but that okay. rate is I don't like that rate. So I'm on just a regular eight cents per kilowatt hour variable rate. I pay a little fixed charge and then eight cents a kilowatt hour. Okay. Calculate at eight cents a kilowatt hour, about two hundred and fifty watt hours a mile. 
Okay. Gives you two and a half cents a mile. Okay. Okay. So my 300 miles wow. is $7.50. You know, you know, I just, just noticed in two days ago, gas went up down here. Is that like at this point in time it was two eleven? Now it's two twenty seven, and who knows? We have no control over that, by right. the way. So we may get stuck with some of that. In another life, Mark was that was his field was energy management. In fact, the company he owned that's what they did software for. Uh, Electric energy co-ops right? okay yeah, okay electric and gas utilities okay so this is right down your alley a yes, little bit it is right right down my alley. okay so when go. he's calculating the kilowatt hours and all that technical jargon that's just the what the engineer he is that's right. what he did that's, you know bef- uh, back in the day so uh this really appealed to you on many levels right yes and you know the other thing i look at is okay i'm using electricity you say well that's not necessarily green but, right. but Cobb EMC is about 40% non-fossil-fueled energy. Right. So they're a big chunk of nuclear, particularly at night when you're charging, when the nuclear plant, the two nuclear plants in Georgia, Hatch and Vogel, are running full out. Okay. And, okay. and then they get a fair amount of hydropower from right. the Southeastern Power Administration. They right. have a fair amount of solar energy. So when you're charging that car, you're about 40% non-fossil fuel, and then most of the rest is natural gas-fired, which for the purists out there, that's bad, but it sure is a whole lot better than coal, and it's a heck of a lot better than gasoline. Right, right. Well, you know, it's that we're just at this point in our development, our evolution with this right now, and we've been on coal-fired and Mm -hmm. hydro and those kind of things, and nuclear. Everybody has this worry about nuclear plants uh, these days. That may be some of the safest, though, according to some I've heard. You know, it's interesting that you raise that issue because Mark and I were talking about the future of energy management right last night and one of the uh, new technologies you were talking about had to do with salt right molten salt reactors yeah, yeah so why don't you talk to mike a little bit about I don't that think that's i've ever of, heard yeah this is that. this is fascinating and it could in many ways be the future and and the people who develop it you know energy is a commodity so co-ops purchase it like a commodity right right so okay. uh it, anyway it fascinated me i never heard anything about it why don't you talk a little bit about that uh, yeah, to me if if, if there is a future to nuclear energy, nuclear uh, el- produced electricity, it's uh, what they call the molten salt reactors. Mm. Basically, a molten salt reactor uses a molten s- uh, nuclear material to heat a, a melted salt, and then they run. They use that melt that hot melted salt to boil water to turn a turbine, just like a regular okay. generator. Okay? okay. But the 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 sweet thing about it is is it's not a pressurized water reactor. If you lose all power to the thing and it just goes dead on you, all that happens is that molten salt slowly cools down into a big old glob. There's no release of nuclear material. Right. It just it just can kill the environment and kill all of us. It just solidifies in place. The second cool thing about the molten salt reactor is it can be fueled with very low level uranium type materials so it can actually take the waste the uranium waste Sorry that's sitting in big old piles around all the nuclear reactors in our country and france and china wherever germany and use that as fuel it takes what is a huge problem now what do we do with all this right stuff? yeah and then the and hundred year just, burial thing and, and so you on. just use it to power these reactors so you've got a much safer reactor that's resistant to any well, kind well, of well salt is salt is everywhere right i mean we wouldn't have any supply problem well it's a special kind oh, of special, salt it's right, not yeah, like yeah. sodium chloride but i'd i'd have to go back and dust off my uh little book to okay. be able to speak to the more detailed engineering aspects right but um bill gates was all the way to contract with china to build one of these and the gates foundation had uh had gone through the design process to create a fully checked out design uh nobody in the states wanted to do it so they had worked a deal with the chinese to do it who incidentally need to do something clean right and they're trying to they're trying to they're they're, 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 they're a big polluter right they're a bit they're part of the um paris climate agreement right and they're actually 
unlike us who oh, aren't. There we go. Um, and uh, they are trying to step up and solve some of their heinous pollution problems. Well, sure. And one of the solutions for them is to go with molten salt reactors. So they had contracted with the with the uh, Gates Foundation and had a design, and they were about to put it in place. And our latest trade problems with uh. China shut that down. Oh. Well, I'm. I'm. Uh, first of all, I'm pleased uh, to hear something new like that. I love the the on the on the edge of this you know discovery of something new that we need to solve some problems. Seems like that's and this is a political statement, but but we need to tackle the real problems as opposed to the ones that we see on the media and everywhere right. these days. Um, climate change and all of the stuff like that. We need to put some energy and thought and effort toward that. But that's very promising. Then, what do you think? Is it is it something that can come you know, online? The trade the trade stuff's going to get fixed eventually. You know, right. it's just a matter of time. And I think the Chinese will pick right back up where they left off as soon right. as they get the opportunity. Because it's right. great for them. They they're they they've got a huge problem to replace their coal fired generation, and it's U.S. technology right. that we won't use in the U.S. Right. It's amazing. In that we, it's sort of like it it's out. sort of like uh, we shipped out Deming to Japan and almost <laughs> lost the car industry <laughs> because we were not into quality circles, right? Same kind uh, of right. deal. I don't know. That's uh, that's uh, things we have to struggle with on some of this. <laughs> but you know, when you when you're talking about power plants, and I, I'm also thinking about solar power right. and the idea. My wife is uh, really on on this kick, and she says, "Go get that solar glass." Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's the term that that. Uh, uh, Elon, and of course, it's in New York or California. I got to drive the pickup up there and get some of it. But, yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm just kidding. I, I've got to, I've got to figure <laughs> I got to figure out how to how that's going to work. Um, but yes, um, that's again back to Elon Musk. I mean, here we go with solar power for our homes. Watched a couple of. Uh, you know, quick uh, YouTube videos where some guys are doing this and they're paying, the, they're sending back. You have to have an agreement. You have to have the right equipment to be able to send back stored energy back to the grid. Yes. And those kind of things. And I learned a little bit about it, but I, I'd like to hear your your thoughts about uh, solar power in the home. Let's get those panels up. And why, what are we waiting for? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, well, the, the economics on that are getting better every year and and it only will continue to do so um and that but that's not the only thing there's also you know larger scale solar that uses the existing grid as well so you know not everybody's house is ideal for solar a lot depends on where you are and um for in a lot of situations at today's costs anyways right it will cost you more to get power um from solar on your rooftop than it would to get it from your local utility, especially if they're going green as well. You, you know, what do you care? You might, you're just as happy to. But then there's tons right. of places where it's awesome. And, right, right. You know, uh, Elon Musk has the uh, the battery wall, so you can right. get. Right, I've seen, I've seen. You know, pictures you get enough, those, yeah. you get enough panels and enough battery walls, and you don't need that power company anymore. Yeah, and it's it's very so. interesting. In the video I saw, and I hate to keep quoting some video from the Netherlands here, but uh, the the guy had to had the wall, had two walls, mm-hmm. and then had another kit that would allow it because he was talking about when the power goes out mm-hmm. at his house, um, that that solar power goes down too. And yes. the reason is uh, that if the guys are working on the lines and so forth out there, and you're sending a charge up there, you, it's it would dangerous. Have a problem. Yeah, yes, that's you, right. T- if you want, if you want to be able to be on when your local utility goes down, you have to have more equipment. You have right. to have right. an automatic throwover switch that says, exactly. "Hey, the the power is off from the grid. I'm cutting you off from the grid, so, and then letting your home power." power your house right and right. that exists that i mean you can do that with yeah. a gas generator you can do it with solar panels you can do it with any kind of home generation you just have to, it adds an expense a level of expense to the installation right that that, that was the kicker that, that on, the, makes, on the just on makes the it more expensive yeah and and seeing that well it's hope uh it's sort of on the cutting edge again like we were saying we're not there yet but there's the direction that we need to go in so i'm real pleased that that's kind of out there and coming but uh I don't well if know i was what building else, a house right? from scratch i'd have that because if yeah. you look at it in the the 
you know, economics would really go out the window for me. I'd go, okay, you're building a house. You're going to put a hundred or two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars into building this house. Sure. And you're talking about ten or fifteen thousand dollars to have this house be autonomous from the grid. <laughs> Why wouldn't you do that? Right. Let's do that. And and what I what I saw was that's available now. Yes. That that, that switcher abs- that keeps you off yes, the grid. Absolutely, and, it and is so available now. It's not like it's science fiction. We have no, to wait. No. So that's what Tom and I sometimes go around and around about. You know, it's like okay, things in the future. Well, what about now? We are moving fast and furious right, right. in these directions. So, Tom, tell me about your experience. You rode in the Tesla. So, what what was it like for you? It it was analogous to riding in a New York taxi. I had that same kind of attitude. And and what I mean by that is okay, I've ridden with Mark sure. in all kinds of different varying situations for, over for, for more years than for, we care for, to that's talk about for you know yeah, 50 you years, right? So so I have a I have a high level of trust for Mark and sure. his driving. But as soon as he told me that the car really was in total command of what we were doing i had to re- realign that trust and it was a lot like it was a lot like when you climb in a taxi there you are in atlanta leaving the marriott in a taxi and uh you don't know the taxi driver you just have to trust that well it somebody has has looked into this and developed this situation and it's got to be pretty safe but you right. always have that little thought in the back of your mind you you don't have a total level of comfort so when the car <laughs> would do things that i didn't expect what i mean right is the way mike you drive a curve and the yeah. way i drive a curve oh yeah we hug the left side right this car doesn't do that it drives dead center of the lane that's what it does and it's reading the sides of the lane to stay dead center so when That's you when thought, you actually yes. viscerally expect it to do something it doesn't do it it's doing it on its own way in in really in a way that's safer and more appropriate but uh at the same time you're you're used to what you're used to. You're used to your own driving, the driving of your friends, your spouse, whatever. Well, then, and it then, doesn't do that. Well, the, uh, there's this race car idea. We've all watched NASCAR and all the other races and so forth, so you hug that inner inner line there. Yeah. Uh, and also, if you're in the center and you, and it, according to speed, you're probably going to have to shift. You're going to you're going to see the you shift of gravity kind of going in a different direction than you well, used I told, to. Well, so I told like I told Mark I didn't have to go to the gym and do an ab workout because <laughs> I was my core was tense the whole time, you know, for various reasons, and uh, and uh, you know it depended on what the car was doing or what Mark was doing, but right. but all in all. You know, you and I had that discussion ahead of time, and I had told you I just wasn't into a self-driving car and went, didn't really want to ride in one. I think, well, I think actually what you said was, I'll follow behind you guys. Yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. And and, and really, uh, I, I got used to it really quickly. And, wow. and and really the mindset is it's it's very well augmented human driving in other words right. it's not an really, automatic really car i mean you uh, when it gets confused it turns it back over to you but there are things that you would think would confuse it the 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 two things that blew me away okay. of, of everything right. one go. was uh when you have construction you have road barrels all oh, right it right, loves right. road barrels <laughs> it loves it's road better barrels. on road barrels than it i would ever them. be it can see them when you you get right. confused by them the the human brain gets confused oh, right. come up on a construction site or something like that the car doesn't get confused by barrels it hey. just sees them <laughs> and and, and there's another thing that that brings up when i first got the car delivered right it didn't show road barrels and i got a software update that just happened overnight like okay. two days after I got the car, All right. that was Elon Musk's latest software update. That's their their move to have full autonomous driving. Right, that's that's where they're going. Right. And and driving around town with traffic lights because right now the autopilot is pretty much on the interstate or a highway or something. Right. So I got in the car the next day. And all of a sudden, it's showing me when I pull up to a stop sign. It shows the stop sign on the screen. It's showing. The traffic lights and it shows whether they're green or red or flashing yellow right and it shows uh like 
like you were saying it shows cones on the side of the road when you're when you have construction cones and so that recognition on the part of the automobile to be able to detect and understand all these signs on the road is part of getting to where you can have that car drive itself around town i mean that's that's where it's going right mm-hmm. that's um, supposedly they are uh so so gonna have it this year but a I don't know. software update in the future is it will that be full autonomous at this point i According mean you're to elon call? musk okay well i'll go with what elon says and even know that he's the car's got the capability he's claiming he's going to get it in 2020 i don't know but i'm just thinking is is quick. your car ready for that everything that needs uh, supposedly car? the car i have has That's the all capability. the hardware to do it and okay. all i need is a software update software update so here's the other you know, thing i skip those software updates a lot on windows pcs that i have you know i don't Tom, think you do it on know. your car i don't think i'm i'm <laughs> going to skip any of those on the on the car for the, sure the, the other thing that was really that was a surprise for me is the car has a rear view camera that you can use in lieu of your rear view mirror and okay so it okay. shows you see yourself moving real rear in the rear real time okay and it cuts out all the blind spots and it fills the screen like your like your tablet there right but the thing about it is if you're not used to seeing that view it is tremendously disorienting because you're yes. moving fast. Yeah, that's in motion. See, in I, motion. I have the backup camera in my truck, right? I yeah. that thing. And it's, it akin, only, it's only, akin to that. But it it's, only is, is in reverse when you're moving slow. So you're talking about actually you're moving driving forward, forward at and 65. If you're at 65, it is tremendously disorienting yes. because you're – you're seeing you, the road go by under you're the car. Seeing, you're seeing the rear. You're seeing the rear, and you're seeing the front. And really, it's a brain thing. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's like any other instrumentation. You'll your brain will adapt. But at first, did it for me when Mark demons he said look at this look at this rear view and i was like man i'm getting nauseous i don't think i can look yeah, it was at just it. strange right, right, but right. but but i think you adapt to it pretty quickly you know well it's just it's another uh, addition uh to your driving that will probably make things safer for you well, in well lots it, of ways, it does right? if, if you're in a situation where you're going to be changing lanes on your own mm-hmm. um the thing about it is it's a much higher resolution camera than the backup camera on your truck right so it's a crystal clear picture and like tom said it covers your blind spots so if this guy's here you can't see him in your side mirror you can't see him in your little regular rear that's view a mirror. terrible can, thing too you by can the way, see that. him in that can in that rear view camera he's sitting right there you can see him right there that the the blind spot i don't know if we're ever going to fix that but this is getting close to making oh, sure it's, right it's, and and other than that, just the regular display that's always up is right. showing a graphical representation of your lane markers and every car around you. So you can see the guys in your blind spot on that as well. Oh, okay. All right. All right. That's good. Because I, 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 I have to admit, there was um, maybe a week or so back, I tried to, I was going to pull in this lane next to me, and there was a car right in that blind spot. And mm-hmm. I've got two mirrors yeah. on the side, right? I yeah. still couldn't see them. Couldn't see them, yeah. That is interesting. All right. So, um, yeah. So you've had this car now for? About three weeks. About three weeks. Okay. So what about others in the family? Your wife? What is, how, how does she? Uh, she loves it. Love it. Okay, there you go. She loves we knew it. That She's, uh, she, had the, she had the Beamer, the Z4, and this was really a replacement for that car. Right. But I was always drive, driving – an SUV, yeah. Um, and when we drove together, I didn't really fit in that Z4 very well. So we would always drive together in the SUV, using tons of gasoline and right. that sort of thing. But so now this Tesla is our main driver. If she's going to tennis, she takes it. If we're going somewhere together, we both take it. I brought it down here, um, and uh, she, it. She's she's always been a foot all the way on the gas or all the way on the brake. Yeah, see, down. she's not a very good uh, a very good <laughs> example of who you'd ask is it easy to drive because at 16 she had a sports car and okay, she's always go. had a sports car. I mean a high performance sports car, <laughs> which she she had drove. An, it. She had an MG. She had a 67 Camaro. Oh, she, she, there you she's go. Had two Z4s. Okay, so she, so she's a sports right. car she girl. Likes to drive. Yeah, and, right. And all she had to do was stick her foot on the gas and this thing goes. <laughs> 
zoom and uh, done deal. I like it. All right, that, that is that is just so much fun. Well, I'm so glad we get a chance to talk about this because this is sort of the dream for me is having that having the Tesla. But going going further because I think in our future, I mean, come on now, we're using these fossil fuels, right? And, and the how nice long thing is about it last? the it's nice thing fun. about this is if your local utility comes around and gets more more renewable energy in their in their mix you got this electric car you're automatically getting more renewable energy in your mix because you're just plugging in right so up the scale so you have to look at so the scalability as soon as your of utility of moves towards a greener a greener portfolio your car automatically picks that up see this has a lot to say to say about all the things that that are creating climate change now right. that that the technologies are out there if we'll only develop them and right now it doesn't appear that governments are really getting behind that kind of innovation incidentally yes, those technologies right. will create some of those jobs we talked about that yes. are disappearing because of ai it, exactly yeah. yeah we had this conversation once I saw, about I saw, AI. I saw, yeah I saw and that and, and it will it, well factories and manufacturing yeah. and all this stuff and yeah. of course tom, tom Tom's big issue is that we're not making things anymore. Um, and, uh, well, we're making Tesla. Well, we're making Tesla, <laughs> right. so maybe this is going to help him uh, deal with that issue a little bit. But, yeah, so I, I – in a in a sort of the view of the future this is where we need to be we need to go now the government hasn't caught up but industries some of these corporations have a uh, few and far between but you know and this is one of the things that dan talks about with zizek and and his philosophers uh yeah. who are basically he brings in this notion that the individual trying to do something to help the environment is not really going to make no, that big has, a difference it has to be done it has scale. to be those uh, those corporations that are right. the polluting the world and all the plastic in the oceans and on and on. As but at the back. same time, Gladwell would say that if enough folks start doing these kinds of things, suddenly there'll be a tipping point. And Thomas Kuhn would say, then you make a leap, right? right. So, so the there's I'm tremendously optimistic, really, okay. Okay, that, good. that that good. these Me things too. will contribute. But ultimately, it will it we it can solve a lot of the issues we're dealing with now. But leadership could make the whole process much more much faster in the same way that we decided to go to the moon in 10 years well I, that's the, and we were talking about that too that that we are moving so much faster in the book that we were going to talk yeah. about next time around yeah it talks about the future being coming faster than we think and and i don't those paradigm shifts that you just mentioned a moment yeah. ago are going yeah. to happen more often right. it seems to me in some so many ways hopefully that, hopefully let's hopefully. be helpful but you're right the leadership the government uh, those kind of things they seem to be behind the curve it, they're trying to please everybody not getting things done in it way. bothers me when china is thinking about the very things we're developing in the states and we can't see the value to it it's almost like uh rock and roll was co-opted in in the uk and sent back and repackaged for the united <laughs> states it doesn't really make sense when we already have this right right yeah Sorry. that oh, that's, that's a, absolutely true and that, that is an argument that we we need to kind of and, and a debate we need to keep going there you with go there because uh, yeah sometimes some people see it but you know it's it's leaders sometimes that do this and i think industry leaders and we're talking about elon musk but look at the diversity of the things that he has taken on space uh, uh, Batteries, <laughs> solar power, electric cars. Yeah. Uh, transportation, as you talked about. Drilling holes these drilling, under California. <laughs> drilling giant holes <laughs> under oh, California. Oh, and the satellites. The satellites. Uh, my daughter was. Oh, that's right. It's my it. daughter was out in Oregon. She's she's out in the country in Oregon. Okay. Um, and it's, you know, very dark skies and such. And she and some of her friends were out one evening and thought they saw a ufo okay. they saw this huge line of flashes going across the sky bang bang right, bang right. and um she, she came to visit us for the last three weeks and she was telling me about it and and she was saying dad you wouldn't believe it you probably aren't going to believe what i'm telling you but i was seeing this really <laughs> by the way that's, that's what a lot of folks say yeah i saw that thing in the sky and, you won't believe this, everybody but. <laughs> everybody that was there all swears they saw it and i said i know what it is 
because I had just read an article. Right. Ooh. It was Elon Musk's launch of his <laughs> 60 satellites that are going up to put internet all over the world. My gosh. And I said, Colleen, I know exactly what that was. <laughs> Showed her the article and everything. She was going, oh, thank you for telling me that. <laughs> yeah, they were there. <laughs> yeah, you could go down the wrong path with that, you know. Uh, well, they were unidentified UFOs flying or, objects right. as far as she was concerned. They were yeah. unidentified, and they were flying. <laughs> Listen, there's a uh, – yeah, and he's put it, he's put this out, uh, uh, and just even, I think, a couple weeks ago, <laughs> yeah. there was, there was one, there another launches, one that went yeah. off. Yeah. And so uh, he, he made some astronomers mad, too. They were saying he was light polluting their yes light polluting their telescopes. So you know, somebody saying should. he's going to paint them black or something. Like well, that. they need to quit drinking the haterade, right? So, <laughs> so, it's, uh, All right, you, you just, just got to move on. New, a new term here on TMT, uh, the haterade. All right. Well, yeah, it's because uh, I saw this. I saw this um, uh, graphic. I think it was a graphic representation of the satellites and the things that are surrounding the planet. It looks pretty crowded yeah, up there. Yeah, it is a little um, bit scary. So, <laughs> and he's putting like 16,000 or yeah, 12,000 or something that, in that, that neighborhood that up there, some, right? That does have some uh, – some things to be well there's there's about. always a trade-off on these things as we move forward i guess well, it doesn't ways. look it doesn't look any worse than 285 in atlanta right <laughs> so it's not that crowded <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you looking at uh the the rings of saturn and you go what are those blue black spots on my uh, <laughs> yeah, telescope here <laughs> that's right that, this yeah. thing is moving <laughs> well it's all fun to me and i and i'm excited about it i'm glad to see you tom uh you know, being a little more excited about this. Embracing Tesla. it. I'm embracing, embracing the it. technology and the new. I'm not yet a ravenous beast ready to consume everything, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I am embracing it somewhat. <laughs> well, that's that's a good move. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed it. All right, so you talked a little bit about driving the Tesla, things you're discovering. You're still discovering more things about the Tesla and driving it, I, I suppose. But also, there's a new update. How often are these updates coming along? Oh, uh, you're. Uh, I'm going to have to wait and see. I've seen one since I've had it. So. Okay. But it was okay. a pretty big one. All right. So, but, you know, my um, my my tablets, um, uh, my laptops, my desk computer eventually go down somehow. Something happens, you know, the longevity, the, the life, the shelf life of these things sometimes in question. Um, so what about repairs or things that would go down? What do you expect that might you might have to pull into the shop with this Tesla? We're, we're just going to have to see. I'm taking a bit of a leap of faith on that. All right, there we go. For four years or uh, forty thousand miles, I've got a okay. I've got a nice little warranty, so they're supposed to fix everything that breaks. But you know. It's like there's, anything there's no, else, right? I asked, yeah. when do I need to bring it in? They said, well, you need to get the tires rotated probably yeah. <laughs> after about 10,000 miles. Wow. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let, let me ask you about this. How about brakes? Because as we – It does have brakes. Oh, the brakes. Oh, that's good, braking is a whole subject with this Well, car. see, that's what I was wondering about. Is that a standard disc-type brake? They, do, or how is they that? do have standard disc brakes, but you never have to use them. You basically – Okay. Now, Tom, did you – well, I just lost you there for a second when he said you don't have to use the no, brakes. No, I, I'd seen all that last time. Okay, all right. So maybe it was me I was talking about. All right, yeah. Let's go back. Yeah, I'd seen all that. Um, so uh, uh, when you let your foot off the gas, the car employs regenerative braking, which means it turns the engines into generators, and the force of having to turn the generators to recharge your batteries slows the car down. Okay. So you never have to use the brake. If you just take your foot all the way off the gas, the car slows down and comes to a stop. And you recapture the energy. And you're recapturing the energy of your yeah. momentum. Okay. This is uh, – that's kind of out there, don't you think? I mean, wait a minute. Am I just reacting to, to, uh, now, too much of that? Because, now you can okay, use you take the it brake. Off and it, you can use the brake. Sure. And if you come up too close to a car too fast, you have to use the brake right, because sure. the regenerative braking doesn't go – quick enough to stop you in time right but very quickly and i mean within five minutes of driving this car you find yourself easily you're just regulating the pedal 
uh, I want to say keep saying the gas pedal, but there's no gas. Uh, I don't you, know. We got to come up with a name the for this. The accelerator pedal. Juice pedal. The accelerator. The, what? the juice, juice pedal. pedal. The accelerator <laughs> pedal. And, right. And, accelerator. And now it's Thank an accelerator you. decelerator pedal. Okay. So you just you very quickly, and I mean it's amazingly fast. You get very used to coming up, and you always keep your foot a little bit on the gas to get that coasting feeling that you're used to when, with your gas power. Right. Car. Cruise control. Oh, it's got cruise control. Of course it has cruise control. What am I well, talking about? Well, it's one here? down on the stock to do cruise control, two down to do autopilot. So, But okay. this cruise control, actually, if it's on autopilot, it also de- accelerates, decelerates based on traffic and the road conditions. You but don't I even think, have to go into autopilot to do that. Okay. The regular cruise okay. does that. The regular cruise reads the car in front of you, reads the lane lines. It keeps, keeps you in your lane. and So unlike my truck when it's on cruise and I'm – coming up on somebody and the, this this would not have me stamping on the brakes and slowing you, down and you, turning the you just get so lazy on. you just forget about it because the car slows down it does it and then speeds back up and when it speeds clear. back up well yeah. see i think it goes to what you said about a total redesign and mm-hmm. what you said about all the things that they thought that they thought through because yeah. it's not it's, it's not tacking process. technology on my car it's right. a total redesign a total of what a car re-ride. well we've we've done that with lots of products sure. throughout the term you know, education's just one we talked about right? well yeah. we've got to come back to that i've yeah. I got a I got a chapter i want to share with you on education yeah. so yeah so th- this is new from the ground up maybe that's what we need to do with a lot of things maybe even including education so. maybe uh, we had some thoughts about on, that. On the autopilot, there's one thing I never did mention that uh, yeah. bears talking about, and that right. is um, it does, when you first engage autopilot, it has a little disclaimer coming up saying you, you have to keep your hands on the wheel. Right. Okay? Because it can get confused, and it can disengage if something goes wrong, like a car right. coming into your lane or something like that. So you got to be ready to take control sure. at any Which time. Which you should be, Right. Right. And they also say you shouldn't be using it except on highways and interstates and things of that nature. But you can use it anywhere. Right. Because the little gray steering wheel comes up whenever it sees lane-keeping information. And Mm -hmm. if that gray steering wheel's up, you can put autopilot on, and it'll keep in your lane and do its thing. And if you use it adroitly... It's really an assistive technology. In other words, right. let's say it's last night it raining like and you've got barrels everywhere and you're not seeing the road. You just go. Then blunt. the car will see the road for you, and then you're still in control. That's the amazing thing to me. That's and what the sold additive me, feature. Of it sold road. me on the technology. I was coming home <laughs> from uh, having yeah. having uh, dinner with a buddy of mine uh, last night, actually, and it was night before last. Night before last. No, it's night before last. Mm-hmm. And it was raining like there's no tomorrow. Right. And I was driving down Highway 9, Roswell Road, heading back toward – or Alpharetta Highway, heading back toward Marietta. And with the lights, the, the street lights and the rain, I could literally barely see the lane markers. Sure. But I look on my screen here. And my car is seeing them perfectly. <laughs> and I just do my dunk, dunk. <laughs> and I know that I'm not supposed to be using it necessarily or not trusting it that much there, but mm-hmm. it helped the heck out of me. Okay. Because I could sit there with my hands on the wheel, knowing I may have to take over at any minute, but while it's seeing those lane markers, and I can see how it's seeing them because it right. shows you dark blue lines if it's seeing them good, um, you just have a – a feeling of confidence and you know it's it's helping helping you keep station i i, I i'm just thinking this is a, an amazing and first of all this is a great conversation uh, amazing uh information we're learning today but i'm not sure the average joe and i refer to this guy imaginary guy that's walking up and down the street that's not informed uh but there's <laughs> there's probably reason for me to do that but the average joe has no clue that this is available, this out there, what it's about, anything. They've heard a little spec here and there. Until you've driven one, it is just hard to understand or wrap your head around how cool this is. And it's like my wife and I have been telling each other as we've been driving this thing and learning about (laughs) it. it. You used to say... Well, that's a nice car, but it's no Mercedes Benz. Well, those days are gone. (laughs) It's now you say, well, that's a nice car. 
but it's no Tesla. It's no Tesla. <laughs> All right, there you go. There you go. Almost a final word in this thing right here. <laughs> Well, I think it's I think it's pretty amazing, and I appreciate you coming in today, Mark, and uh, sharing with us uh, about your experience, your new car, but also some of the other stuff about technology and and uh, this this movement of Tesla and Elon and and the other kind of things. Um, so where where do we go? What's what's your thought? Let me I try to get this question in with people who come in or around technology and these kind of issues. What's next? What do you what, beyond just the automobile side of it? What's what do you see in terms of where we're going? Technology. What do we need? What's out there? What's your sort of vision of the future? Well, I I, I don't know about uh, really the focus of this podcast and right. such, but when I look at countries in the European Union mm-hmm. and China. Mm-hmm are really being the leaders in the world trying to wrap their arms around the problems we're facing. And I'm sitting here right now pretty sadly disappointed with what kind of leadership on world problems we're getting here in the United States. Mm -hmm. We Mm -hmm. have the smartest people in the world. We have some of the greatest freedoms in the world, if you look at our press kinds of things we do here right now and the greatest technology and the greatest economy why are we not number one leaders out in front of solving these problems rather than you know complaining and moaning and whining oh we can't do anything because the chinese will drag us down hell they're doing stuff that's right you know i'm i'm kind of disappointed in what we're doing right now and i just i I just see that it's time for the United States to get back in a driver's seat and take a leadership role on all these issues. There you go. What do you think? What, what do you think's behind that, too, Mark? I mean, what? What? So what? We do have the smart people. We've got the, we the innovators. We've got the people. We've got the resources. What's What's preventing this? Is it just government and politics? Is that what we're talking about here, or did leadership? What do we think? I think it's a leadership vacuum right now, and I, you know, I see. I see municipalities and states doing way more than we're doing at the federal level, and the federal government right, needs right. to step up and take follow the leadership that we're doing at the grassroots level. Heck, right. city of Atlanta is going has made a commitment right. to go carbon neutral. You know, city of Atlanta <laughs> is ahead of the United States of America. What what are we talking about here? This is right. just insane. So. I know, I know. Well, it uh, it's something we have to grapple with. It's just this time. Maybe it's a maybe it's this speed bump that we just have I to get over is. and kind I, of move it's forward. Because you know, I've always, I've told a lot of my friends, soon as the second island is totally underwater, everybody's going to wake up. And as soon as you know, yeah, the highway out to Tybee Island is always underwater. Uh, we're going to see a lot more action. The Miami, thing, uh, half the city of Miami is The sad thing I is, is we're going to be a whole lot further behind the eight ball by the time that happens. It's going to be 30 years down the road when that we're, happens. Yeah, we need to get in gear and yeah. get going, don't we? All right, I'm, I'm totally ag- in agreement with that. Tom, final word. What's, uh, what's it been like for you today uh, to, to uh, hear all of this and be a part of it? And I'm glad we got at that last minute there. We got a little bit of like, I uh, want to pound my fist on the table. This thing is not where it needs to be. But what, final thoughts for us today. Well, carbon issues, gl- climate change, those kinds of things, the solutions are already there, and they are not woo-woo and new age and out there and – uh, crazy. They are pragmatic, and uh, they'll have the side benefit of creating jobs. And I think these are, to Mark's point, these are some of the issues that we need to think about in the United States rather than it seems like we have a narrowed focus. I think it's a matter of focus, really, ultimately. I, I, I'm glad to hear you say that. No, so much for clean coal. All right. <laughs> uh, today it's been a pleasure. Mark Hackett's been here. Tom Hackett. We've had the Hackett brothers in the studio, and I couldn't be more thrilled about it. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can go out and maybe uh, see what that Tesla is all about in just a couple minutes. You okay with that? I, th- I think you need to. Yeah, well, let's do it, man. Take the GoPro and uh, get some get some. Footage. <laughs> let's get some footage on yeah. this thing. All right. Thank you guys for being here, and it's we'll see pleasure. you next time. Thank you, Mark. So long, everybody. Take care. Thank you.